Okay, so key concepts then in, into a bit of theory. You remember I said at the start of what we often find in labs that volatility was, was, was the elephant in the room in most labs. Uh, what this is meant to represent is workload uh, being variable over time. So that's a nice sine wave that I stole off the internet. Um, and that is the mean, represents the mean of that workload. Okay. And that line represents the typical staffing level. If you have volatility, uh, and it's generally in most uh, uh, pharma, it's a bigger sin to be late than to be expensive. So what the answer to volatility for most labs is that over time they have uh, secured more resources than you would need for th the mean. Okay? But it's never enough to deal with the ultimate peaks because you just couldn't carry that cost all the time. So the difference between those two lines is depending on your business need, either excess cost or additional capacity. Okay, if you can sort out your volatility, uh, you can make a gain, and a very substantial gain at that. Uh, if you get the peaks which are in, in excess of your staffing level, in other words, if you put more work into your lab than you have resources to do, guess what? You're going to fall behind. You can't do more than you have a resource for. Um, and if you get an extended trough, a quiet period, your productivity drops uh, significantly. Okay, generally what we see in most labs is cycles of run late, catch up, run late, catch up. So when you're in a peak, uh, you're falling behind, your backlog is growing, your lead times are drifting out. Um, you, you'll do small things like add additional uh, uh, hours of overtime and whatever, but there's only so much you can do. Uh, you can't suddenly bring in new people because the training time is so long. Uh, and then you wait until you get into a, a natural trough and then you catch up and then go back to, 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 to the cycle. Okay, so that's just park that one in your head for a second.